In this video, I'm gonna edit this image that I took of Diana with the Fuji X Pro 3. Got like 18,000 likes on Instagram. I don't know how I got that. I don't know how I got that much engagement, but I'm gonna edit that image in Lightroom only using my new computer, the MSI P65 Creator laptop. All right, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I normally do when I upload an image in Lightroom is adjust the exposure and adjust the crop. So let's talk about how I crop this image. Actually, I didn't even crop the image. That's how I took it. And normally you don't want to crop the image at like the knees. You know what I mean? Um, but because Diana's legs are converging, they're coming together. I feel like it's okay to crop at the knees because they're coming to a, a point, right? Whereas if her legs were spread out, I wouldn't crop at the knees. Make sense? Now I like the I like the composition here. I like the buildings up up, up top of her head. So I'm gonna leave that space open. I like it. Now the next thing is to adjust the exposure. Now luckily for me, the exposure is pretty spot on. But that's something I would normally do. I want the skin tones to look really good because the next thing I'm gonna do is send this picture over to Photoshop, where I'm gonna do my skin retouching, my dodging and burning, and all the little things that I do. I'm not gonna show you in this video that process because I have a portrait retouching course the link will be down below on how I glamify my portraits to look the way they look their skin is already edited okay so we're just gonna pretend like I took the photo to Photoshop and I would normally do that by pressing photo edit in and then uh, edit in Adobe Photoshop uh, in Adobe Photoshop and then in Photoshop I would just click file save and the image will come back to Lightroom with all the corrections made. So when I get my image back from Photoshop, what I normally do is scroll through my Lightroom presets. Yes, I am a huge fan of Lightroom presets because it just gives me a quick, like a quick base for what I want. And usually for urban images like this, I go for cooler tones. I feel cooler tones look better for an urban shot, especially if it's not golden hour or anything. So for this one, I already know what preset I'm gonna use. And that is my Toronto preset, which is in my Walmart Drake preset pack. The Walmart, it, it's a little harsh, but we make a couple of adjustments. No preset just works right away. I'm gonna click the Toronto preset. Obviously there's a lot of oranges in the highlights here. I'm gonna make some corrections. This preset's a little harsh. What I'm gonna do is re uh, reduce the contrast. Normally that reduces like the intensity of a preset when they're just too contrasty, too harsh on an image. There you go, that's about good right there. So I adjusted the contrast. And now I'm gonna go down to the HSL slider or the HSL box where the colors are. And um, you see here in the highlights, I have a little bit of orange in this preset. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down a little bit to remove those oranges. So now it's a little bit of a cooler image. Now, uh, one thing that I like to do, and this is kind of a game changing thing if you didn't know about this. When I play with the colors of an image, and let's say, you know, some parts of an image, you don't know what color's in there. You think it's a yellow, you're not sure. You think this is blue, I don't know. So you start playing with sliders. Check this out. This little circle box. I'm confused. This little circle, circle box. This little circle right here, up top. You wanna click that. What that allows you to do now is to customize it, like basically manually change the colors in an image. So let's say I wanted to change the hue of her jeans to maybe to a lighter blue. I can just click on it, and then with my mouse pad, drag up or drag down. You see what's happening here? And but look at the other sliders. That's this what's, ha what's happening. See, I would have thought there's only blue in her jeans, but apparently there's some purple in there as well. And you would have never known that unless you have done like this. So this is how I normally adjust the colors in my image. So let's say I wanna make it a lighter blue. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it like that. Perfect, right? Let's say I want to change the color of this cement. I see some yellow in there. Let's see what it is. So I click on it. I'm gonna drag down and so this is affecting the skin tone. This is the yellow and the orange. I'm not gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not touching that. Uh, let's see the color of this terrain. It's gray blue, usually it's blue. Yeah, it's blue with a little bit of purple. I'm not gonna touch it as well. That's That, that changes the colors of the jeans. So in my opinion, I'm happy with the colors of this image, okay? I'm happy with the colors. Um, there's a couple of adjustments that I wanna make though. I, like I said, I wanted this to be a cooler image. So what I can do here is, instead of just changing the white balance to cool, what I can do is go to my split toning and maybe put some blues in the shadows. So I'm gonna put that on blue and maybe inject some blue in the shadows there. So this is before and after, before and after. I think it's okay. I'm gonna lower down the shadows a little bit, injecting blue, I want that cooler look. But now what's happening is that it's kind of overpowering her skin tone. So maybe I'm gonna put a little bit of orange in the highlights here, before 
and after before and after i think that looks really good i am going to go back up here maybe increase the contrast just a little bit more like right there and i think we're set i i really like how that looks uh maybe drop the highlights down a little bit just a tad let's see before and after before and after okay we're looking good the last thing that i normally do to an image is add a radio filter um, just to give the person a little bit more pop out of the scene right radio filter i'm going to just put a circle around her maybe like this and what that's going to do when you lower the exposure what that's going to do is kind of like darken up the size almost like a vignette and it gives her she just pops out of the scene more so i normally do that i'm going to just give it a slight like right there that looks good right there so here's a quick before and after before and after before and after i i really i'm really happy with that for my urban photo shoots i normally like to desaturate the blues because the blues are usually in the buildings and in the cement lord that you know i desaturate those to give it more of like a gray uh concrete jungle kind of look and um yeah i'm really happy with how this turned out now let me tell you a little bit about this msi creator laptop that i'm editing with right now one thing that really helps me out and amplifies my workflow is the new msi p65 creator laptop featuring the nvidia geforce rtx 2060 gpu this laptop was designed for creators such as myself and for you watching this laptop is part of the nvidia rtx studio lineup and if you don't know what that is nvidia has collaborated with hardware companies like msi and software companies like adobe so that the software is optimized and will allow you to get the full power of their gpus to unlock powerful performance for creators this computer features a 9th gen intel core i7 processor and with such a powerful gpu like the nvidia geforce rtx 2060 this laptop will render 4k footage with color grading effects and titles all super fast and if you're a lightroom user like myself the real-time editing and export makes my work life that much easier with this 4k display with 100 percent adobe color coverage you can throw this laptop in your daily bag and barely know it's even there because it's ultra light at 4.2 pounds and ultra thin at 0.70 inches which is perfect for on the go editing you'll have eight plus hours of battery life with this laptop and it will come in perfectly handy for those long flights where you need to charge your battery and it just isn't guaranteed that you're going to get that plug and you know exactly what i mean Lastly, the silky glass touchpad makes it really easy to navigate and prevents you from getting all those accidental clicks or drags that interfere with your editing workflow. All in all, I'm very impressed with what MSI and NVIDIA have done here with this laptop that caters to us creators. So if you want to check out a little bit more information on this laptop, the link will be down below. I'm telling you the RTX 2060 is a monster GPU and it's so, so fast for anything that you need, video and photo. All right, let me know what you think of the Lightroom tips in the comment section below. That is all I have for you guys right now. See you in the next one.